Imagine a world where we can do computation inside living cells. The problem that we're trying to solve is really trying to have a more sophisticated diagnosis that can happen automatically inside cells. Imagine a biological computer that operates inside a living cell. So for example, it could be used to determine whether a cell is cancerous, and if so, then trigger the death of the cell. So here we're talking about little molecular systems that you can you know, work that run in a test tube or maybe even in a live cell, so they're really small. The type of work that they're doing is essentially they're trying to sense, analyze and control molecular information. In this project, we're trying to use DNA as a programmable material. DNA is highly programmable, just like a computer and we can program a whole range of complex behaviors using DNA molecules. So we're taking advantage of a phenomenon called DNA strand displacement. So DNA strand displacement is essentially a competitive hybridization reaction. So it's two strands of DNA that come together and as they bind to one another, a third strand that was initially bound is kicked off. One issue with like any biology research or, or biomolecular research is that it's always sort of a, a cycle of, of trial and error. You test it, it doesn't work, so you go back to the drawing board and you do that over and over again. And it's a slow cycle because doing experiments just is hard and it takes a lot of time. We developed a language for programming molecular circuits made of DNA. So the programmer would write down a collection of DNA strands and the software will work out how these DNA strands interact with each other and can be used to predict their behavior over time. And this kind of software could, for example, be used to detect and fix bugs in a molecular circuit design before that circuit is built. For decades, biologists had been using chemical reaction networks as a means of describing the behavior of biological systems. So what our technology enables for the first time is that any a system described as a chemical reaction network can now be translated and implemented in biology at the molecular level. One of the things that we've done recently, which I'm particularly excited about, is uh, that we have created, designed, uh, using our tool, and created experimentally is uh, an implementation of the so-called approximate majority algorithm. At the moment, really, the uh, the technology is very much in its infancy, it's still very much at the research stage. So most of what we're doing is in, is in the test tube. An enormous goal will be to have what we're able to do in the test tube also working inside cells. That's a hugely uh, uh, enormous challenge. So this could enable a whole range of biotechnology applications. For example, it could allow us to both detect and treat disease to a level of precision that has not been possible so far. It could also allow us to uh, make new compounds far more efficiently. These compounds could be medicines or biomaterials and ultimately it could allow us to make uh, biological computers that operate at the molecular scale.